I kiss the ground on which you walk I kiss the lips through which you talk I kiss the city of New York Where I first met you You're my darling, don't forget it well, welcome to the web show. Uh, once again on the Gold Coast, it's been a crazy week, and this time catching up with Phil Hart, who's just an awesomely creative guy. Great stories, and I uh, had to go back out there because I was there on Monday catching up with John Stevens from Noiseworks, and jumped in the car and headed back out to catch up with Phil. All right, here we are again. Uh, Phil Hart, how you doing? Tolsy, good, mate. Yeah, good. We were out here just earlier in the week with John Stevens. We were talking about the Oz Rock Cafe and the big thing you had out here. I'd love to know the story about that on tape. Yeah, we... Um John and I got together uh, a couple of years ago and uh, we decided to uh, join forces and do a bit of charity with George Gregan and um, we raise um, a couple of million bucks a year for George and we've uh, entered into the playground appeal which is building um, playgrounds for terminally ill kids around Australia. Mm -hmm. So John and I you know, got together and uh, he gave all of his time for free just to kick it all off for us and then this year we had to come up with a new concept. And 21 years ago, I owned a thing called the Oz Rock Cafe, which is on the corner of uh, William and Victoria Street, opposite the Coke sign at the cross. And it went for six or seven, a huge animal. And um, we decided that we would bring all of our acts back together again and get John to round up his old posse and uh, with mm -hmm. Daryl Braithwaite and Jenny Morris and, and those sorts of guys, bring them to Shannon Knoll. And uh, we brought all the, all the memorabilia out from the, uh, from the storerooms and we uh, decided to take the height and uh, turn it into the Oz Rock Cafe 21 years later. Yeah, I wish I'd have seen that because you told me a story just quickly a couple of days ago and it's just an absolute corker. It's got to be a film someday. <laughs> Tell us about the story in the Osirac Cafe. Yeah, mate, I, I was 20, what am I now, 48, so it was 21 years ago, so I was young and, and even more arrogant and full of myself back then. Um, but I was pushed into a corner by Hard Rock Cafes and um, we were about to open seven days out from uh, the big opening of Osirac. And Hard Rock uh, got a bit pissed off and thought, well, we've got to stop this young, this young bloke sort of stealing our thunder. So four years before they came to Australia, um, we decided to open. So we had Triple M, we had uh, everybody in town uh, coming along. Kenny Rogers was in town, Dolly Parton was there, we had the cockroaches, we had everybody all coming to Oz Rock. Yeah. And it was the first theme cafe in Australia. We were the first ever to do it. And it was five floors. And... Um, so the week out, I got uh, I got this injunction in the mail saying, "Boys, you're no longer you're not going to open. If you go ahead, we're going to sue your ass." So um, I went down to the, uh, the the business registration's name, found out that it w that they could stop me um, until we went to court. So uh, they pulled the name, the registration name off me until we went to court. So I went down and got hold of a mate of mine who was this burnt out, drunk and old solicitor that hadn't won a case ever. <laughs> Said, "Mate, you just got to take me to court." And uh, I'd found out that through the through the uh, business registration names that you can actually register anything that you like, any business, if it's your own name. So I went down there, met the bloke, and he said, well, Mr. Hart, he said, why don't you call it Hearts and stop all the aggravation? And he said, you know, Hart sounds really good. So my ego, as big as it is, it, it really thought, it sounded great. Um, so I thought, well, no, no, I'll try a bit harder. So I took all the books home, read them all up, and found out that I could actually call it my own name. So for $49, I went around the corner, changed my name to Mr. Oz Rock Cafe instead of Philip James Hart. It's now Oz Rock Cafe. And um, we went to court. And uh, Hard Rock walked in, and uh, 30 seconds later, the judge brought the hammer down, walked him out, and said, uh, "Have a great night." <laughs> so the beat, so the, the papers were the beat goes on with Mr. Oz Rock Cafe. When you look back on stories like that, it must still give you a sense of just comedy, right? That you did, you did that. Yeah, it is, mate. It, it, it you know, you, you do things as you're growing up. You do things, and you, you really don't know what the hell you're doing. Mm. And uh, I didn't know I was going to run an international event company. You know, I'm, I've been a chef all my life. You know, I was expelled from school at 14. Um, you know, I've just tried to do everything that we can. Um, you know, we're run by the seat of our pants. Um, but the real trick to, to, to the success of my business is all about environment. You know, it's about surrounding yourself with great people, um, smart people, people that have got integrity. Um, and you end up with a whole lot of good mates. And if you're half smart, you, you know, it rubs off on you. And you start to do some smart things and some good things in the community. You know, we throw some charity in there as well. So, you know, we all have an obligation to help kids out. So all of those components come together and at some stage you wake up in the morning and say well shit I'm doing something pretty cool and you, then you start to formalize a business and uh, 
And we just had a lot of fun doing it. You know, I've got a, an amazing crew of people here that have been there, Christina, Deb, Kev, uh, Maddie and, uh, um, and Andy. And these guys have been with me. Kev's been with me for 22 years. He was the first first staff member I had at the Oz Rock Cafe and he's still wow. still here today. That's awesome. Um, so my guys are the you know the heart and soul of, of heart management. It's not about me. I, I have the name, but um, they've been able to support me and be around me for this time. And uh, we've just got some an amazing you know crew that goes around and work 24-7 in 22 countries and just have a lot of fun. That's awesome, man. That sounds good. And you're talking before you mentioned it, being a chef. Like, you, were you always creative? Is that something that always came about to you? Yeah, I, I, um, my mum was sick when I was 11 and um, I was playing you know, footy every weekend and football was all my thing. Uh, you know, I didn't care much about school. And I, uh, mum got sick on one weekend. I came home. It was a Sunday and every Sunday was roast day. So I went in the kitchen and decided to uh, you know, pull the leg of lamb out and, and make an apple pie and I was 11. <laughs> and it was, I don't know how good it was, but I don't think it would have been real good. Yeah. But um, I just loved it. And um, every weekend the old man used to say, look, you're going to come out and weed the garden and do the lawn with your brother. And I said, F you know, forget that. <laughs> um, I think it was forget that. Um, so, uh, you know, I just stayed in the kitchen. Yeah. And, and I loved it. You know, the, the next week I made some rock cakes and another apple pie and, and just kept going. And I just really enjoyed cooking. And um, didn't tell any of the mates at school, of course, because that wasn't the sort of thing you, do, you did back then. <laughs> so, I, you know, every weekend I'd go and play footy and come home and just start cooking and uh, really enjoyed it and then you know the Liverpool boys high decided to get rid of me they thought you know I'd had enough there and um, so mum and mum took me down and we had some interviews and I was lucky enough to uh, be apprenticed to a guy called Marcel Clay who was the head of the Cating Institute of Australia he was a real nasty old cantankerous 64 year old Frenchman and who had never ever been to school never went to school in his life wow. He went straight when he was six into the kitchens of his father and stayed there. Right. And he, he actually saw something in me that was something in himself. And he didn't tell me, but he thought it was very cool that I'd been expelled and forget the school. And he said, just get, just get into here. So it, it was great. And I just, I just grabbed it by, you know, with both hands. You know, I went out and I won the International Catering Trade Fair. I was Apprentice of the Year in a couple of, uh, couple of the places. It's not a small thing, though, right, to win something like that. No, it, it, they're a lot of luck. There's a lot of luck because there are so many great chefs out there, you know. And, uh, and over the years, you know, I go back into restaurants now and I, I write in our magazine about great experience that I have around the world and I, I, I write about restaurants. Mm. But I see some of the things that some of the chefs are doing today, you know, the infusions of, you know, of Asian and, and European and Australia and we've got some great chefs here in Australia and um, it, it's, it's a very it's a great you know if I had to say to someone what field should you get into as a bloke go and be a chef because it gives you such absolute grounding it gives you the ability to work under enormous amounts of pressure mm. um, you know you're in a production kitchen or an a la carte kitchen you can't get it wrong no. you've got to get it right and people say how did I integrate from being a chef into an event company and it's very similar because you know I only get one chance to get the fireworks right one chance to get John on stage one chance to do everything that we do we can't say to people well hang on a minute can we try that again mm. uh, it's the same in the kitchen you know if you want a medium rare steak you can't send it out well done no. You know, so you've got to get it right first time every time, and you work under extreme pressure. Yeah. And um, you know, if you've got the right team behind you, which I have, it just makes it that much easier. All right. Well, what's it like feeling? I mean, that's why I'm trying to do a show about all that people chasing dreams. So it sounds like you've been chasing him for ever, non-stop. Is that would be fair? Yeah. Yeah. I, I've you know I've been um, you know I, I've always just wanted to make a, a difference in my own life. You know, I, I think the mistake that people make is going through life and, and not actually doing something that makes a difference. Whether it's, whether it's at home or at work or in the community, you've got to do something that makes a goddamn difference. You know, whether you raise a great family and great kids or whether you go out and help the community from a charitable aspect, um, just don't go through life not leaving a mark. You know, um, the mistake's not having a go. Mm. You know, it's not making mistakes, you know, because we all have to make mistakes to improve. And, you know, I encourage my guys to make mistakes. I need to make it once, but they're smart enough never to make it again. Mm. And, and that's what, you know, people have got, to, uh, have got to understand. You've got to get out and have a go. There's plenty of people that just live out there and just go day to day, and they're, they're happy to pull in the paycheck and just go down to the, you know, have a picnic once a week with the family and, and just go back to work. And, but, you know, there are so many opportunities, there's so many things that you can do out there that can make a difference. And it might not make a difference to anybody outside your family. It might just make a difference to you. 
So you don't have to be a rocket scientist, you don't have to be a bloody rock star, you don't have to you know, be a superstar, you've just got to make a difference in your own mind to yourself that you've actually done something. And you know, don't, don't just hang around and watch everybody else have a great time and do all those things that you wished you could have done. That comes back down to environment. You know, get involved with great people and surround yourself and you'll be surprised what you're actually capable of doing. Yeah.